Hey, what's going on guys? Sean or Mustang09 bringing you a brand new video and today is a fresh update on our Friday Focus ST build off with my buddy Todd out in Florida and we have some updates for you. You guys have seen my video that I put up, I think a week or so ago. I'll put a link here and in the description. It's of me showing you guys how to remove the uh, focus badge on the back of my ST. Very simple, straightforward removal, uh, very easy process to do. So if you haven't and you're interested in removing or debadging your car, go check that video out. It's, uh, I think it's an easy walkthrough. Other than that, my car has remained the same and not much has changed. We do have some super exciting stuff to announce though. I am very happy and pleased to announce that Cobb has come on board and they are hooking it up for your boy. I was able to touch base with them and they liked what we were doing over here with the build off challenge. And so they're supporting that and they sent out some parts. Before we get into what they sent though, we're gonna send it over to Todd and he's gonna give you an update on what he's doing because unlike me, he's actually working on his car. So. Take it away, Todd. So I got some backup here. There's Richard. Say hi, Richard. Hello. We had to pull out the battery tray and the air filter, as you can see, to run the power cord. So it's going to be going right through there. It's kind of hard to see. There you go. We're trying to get through the firewall right now, but it's looking like that's going to be our only option is to go through there. So as we keep doing this, I'll keep you guys updated. So as you can see, I've already started, but I'll kind of show you what all I've done so far with it. This right here is your little passenger airbag clip. It goes right inside there. This is the most challenging part to get out from what I noticed. Um, you have the clips that go in right there and there. Those are easy to get off, but these little clips right here are a bit of a pain. So what you have to do is pull it out to where it leans down like this, then take a flathead screwdriver, then pull that little clip up and then as you pull that up, just pull, and it comes right out. Then you can disconnect that little bracket right there, and then you're good to go. And then the next thing that you need to do is lift up your boot. That's pretty easy. Once it's down, just lift right here, pull it up, and it comes right out in those sweats. And then you have to take this part off. This is the little thing that goes around it here, and that just snaps right off. It's pretty easy. Once you get that off, you take this little screw out here, you got a screw there, there's one that goes there, there, and there. So you have four screws right up here. Oh, sorry about that. You got four screws right in this little area, and then this one right here. And the whole thing pulls out. So when I get it pulled out, I'll start filming again, and we'll go from there. All right, so as you can tell, I have got quite the mess and pretzels because no man should work on an empty stomach. Going on here, there's the face plate for all of it. So how this comes off, I'll go and hold up the face plate just so you can get an idea. Obviously it sits on there like that. On the sides here, just take some kind of a spatula. I used a caulking tool, that thing right there has a flat end on the other side. And I just went up and down the sides, each side there, and got it loose and actually pried it off from the top. So pull it back like that. And then on the bottom, see these clips right here. Those are in there. So once you have it set up like this, just kind of lift up and it all comes right out. And then that cable right there connects to, there you go, there, there you go. And that little bracket right there. And that controls everything. So once you get that out, all you have left to do, pull out those few screws and then the radio will be exposed on the back side, which is where I'm going to run my remote wire. From that all the way to the back, which is where I'm going to be putting, see my crossovers there. Might be able to see my amp from here. It's kind of hard to see, but my amp is right there. All right, guys, so I wanted to give you a little walk around here of what all was installed the other day. This is the hardest part of the install by far. So once you get past this part, it's all pretty much downhill from there. As you can see, I've got the power cable already run. It's disconnected from the battery solely because the amp is not hooked up yet. I just haven't had the time to quite install that, but it's running under the battery here. Show you where it's poking through the firewall. Got the LEDs on so you can see it a little easier. There you go. It's running right there. Coming out, going under all of this, 
all the way through the back comes out the trunk right there you can kind of see it it's right here and that's where the amplifier and the crossovers are going to be installed right through there so um it's kind of cool the trunk and the floorboard there has all the compartments where it fits amps perfectly so when you guys are ready to do your install totally utilize that it's definitely um unused space so Another little mention is I would definitely suggest finding a friend who is really sound quality savvy and have them do it because not gonna lie, this was absolutely not my cup of tea. <laughs> this was a hard damn install. So I'll stick to everything under the hood and under the car. You guys can have the audio, but for whatever it's worth, hard work and money well spent sounds great so far. There you go. So now that I've given you guys kind of a walk around of the what, of the install of what all I've done so far, I wanted to give you all a spec of everything that was installed. I went sound ordinance across the board with everything. I decided to put in the sound ordinance because the price along with the quality was the reviews were ridiculous on it. So I went sound ordinance all the way and I definitely recommend it for you guys too. What's cool about it is that it's got a lot of power, but it's not overwhelming for the car size. You know, I definitely didn't want one of those that's like rattling the doors, rattling the trunk. It's not what I'm looking for in this car. I just wanted something more than what the stock system offered. So the speakers that I went with are the P67 series. Those come with crossovers for the front, no crossover for the rear. Um, the rear has just the tweeters installed in them directly. And then the front ones have the subwoofers on the front as well as the two tweeters. And then for the amplifier, I went with the M75-4. So that's 75 watt for the four channels. So it's definitely more than enough power for what I'm looking for with the vehicle. And it also leaves a little bit of space in the back for if I want to put a subwoofer at future time, which probably won't. It's not what I'm looking for, as I said earlier. But I wanted it to have a good sound to it as I'm going down the road, other than what's coming out of the tailpipe and from under the hood. Um, so I was talking to Sean earlier, and I was telling him thanks for getting me in on this build, because what's cool about it is beforehand I was more of a Jeep guy. Um, I've had three Jeeps before, and then before um, I bought this ST, I had just a base model Focus. You know, I just needed it for the gas mileage and for the work at the time. And the reason I bought this car is it's something I'd looked into for a long while and decided, you know what, man, it's time to get something fun to definitely go drive around in. But I was telling him the thanks because, as I said, I wasn't really a car guy. Um, never really got into upgrading and installing stuff. And what's cool about this is it's given me the opportunity to really learn all about the vehicle itself, all about how to do things and how to upgrade things and what goes where what does what stuff like that so it's a really cool so if you guys have a buddy out there who is kind of on the fence about getting into this world about you know doing the whole car thing and upgrading and modding and all that definitely talk to him and push him over the edge you know i'm not gonna lie if it wasn't for sean talking to me about doing this build off i probably still would have nothing done to this and god knows what the hell i'd be blowing my money on um but i'm definitely having a lot more fun doing this for sure so yeah if you have a buddy out there who is kind of on the fence about getting in the cars or wanting to mod and all that kind of push them you know challenge them to a build off you know i'm competitive so as soon as sean challenged me i said hell yeah let's do this man for sure um so to kind of change gears i also wanted to give you guys a rundown of what i'm looking to do with the car overall um so i definitely want to keep it on that stealthy side i like the fact that it's you know a black car to begin with i've got the darker tint on the windows um I'm really liking that, so I want to keep everything as low-key as possible, but I still want you to know that I'm coming up and sneaking up on you on the freeway and, you know, kind of waving by at you as I'm driving past. Um, so I'm looking to do this next month a motor mount for sure to help that shifting. It's that torque steer is just a little out, of, you know, a little out of hand. It's a little intense for me. Um, also might be doing this uh, lowering springs. I'm looking to go with the iBox springs. I like what they're bringing to the table, so I'm going to rock with that. And then there's a possibility that um, I'll do an exhaust over the next couple months. And if I'm feeling real fun and frisky, I'm gonna look at doing the Cobb access port. Um, you know, it's a 2016, I've got a warranty on it still, but you know, why not have some fun with this thing, man? It's a daily commuter, but still, if I'm gonna be in it for as long as I am, I may as well have some fun, right? So um, if you guys have any ideas, let me know. And if you're in the Orlando area, for sure, give me a shout. I mean, as you can see, go city. Uh, 
we always try to get to the soccer matches as often as possible. Um, but if you guys want to meet up for a meet or something, give me a shout. If you have any ideas or challenges, let me know. Take it easy, guys. I have to say, Todd is a maniac for digging that far into his car. I, I'm not much of a stereo guy, although I respect what he's doing very much. I am excited, though, to see what he's got coming in the future. I, I know he's wanting to do like some springs and the motor mount and stuff, and that's so rad. So more power to you, Todd. I'm glad you're learning your car. I'm glad you're learning how to work on the car and you're enjoying it while you do it, because I know sometimes you just kind of want to bang your head against the wall and be like, what did I get myself into here? <laughs> we, we, all, we all do it, it's okay. Alrighty boys, now onto the part that we talked about earlier, which is the Cobb unboxing. I have yet to take this stuff out of the box. I wanted to wait and save it for you guys. And unfortunately, it got delayed a little because UPS lost one of the packages, which had me super bummed because it was a very key and critical package. And I, I was like, man, I hope they find it. And sure enough, they found it. They accidentally sent it to Chicago. Um, so it was just a little delayed, a couple of days. So, but we finally got it. So I'm gonna bring it all to you guys right now. So what we have here is the Cobb Focus ST catback system, which is something that I've always wanted for the car. I've listened to many, many, many exhaust clips, probably hours worth on YouTube to try and find the right one. And every time it sent me back to Cobb because I, I've seen this term thrown around YouTube and it's kind of funny to me. It's more of an adult sounding exhaust, which I kind of have to agree with. It's not loud and, and burbly and it's not obnoxious. And from the videos I've seen, there's hardly any drone at all. And that's something that's gonna be really key to me as someone who drives long distances, who daily drives this car, and somebody that's gotta be on the phone while they're working. Of course, I use Bluetooth while I do that, but I need something that's not gonna distract me while I'm driving or working inside of the car. Let's get right into it. I'm stoked to unbox it. Let's, uh, I'm gonna set you guys down real quick and start tearing into this, and then we'll bring you guys over. Okie doke, it's unreal. The packaging is superb. You have like the big mid pipe piece right here with the, the resonator and the muffler. And from my understanding, this is a proprietary muffler that Cobb has, so it's their only, it's their made in house, and it's their unique sound, which I like that. So we're gonna get into these boxes right here and see what all we have. Box over here just has license plate frame and I think it has nuts and bolts. Yeah, it has all of our hardware and gaskets. They do supply a bushing um, just in case one rips, you have a backup one. So nice of them to include that. <laughs> yes. Okay guys, The okay, it looks so good and it's gonna look amazing on the car. I believe these are four inch tips. Uh, you can see Cobb written on the top. It's like laser engraved in there and it just looks so sweet. So, so sweet. I can't, ah, I can't wait to get these on the car. Just absolutely can't wait to get that on the car. Not only to see what it sounds like, but because it looks freaking amazing. So we got to get this on the car very, very soon. One thing that I do have to brag about is Cobb's customer service. Like I mentioned before, we had a package get lost and I was able to email them and get a response immediately, letting them, letting me know not to worry. If the package is lost, then UPS will work with Cobb to make that right. And then they'll be able to ship me a new one. Alrighty, sticking with exhaust, the next part we have comes in this little box right here. And I have to say, the way that they have their logo on everything makes it so much more fun to get stuff in the mail because you know exactly what you're getting. So let's open this up. This is the exhaust hanger kit for the Focus ST. This is gonna make sure that this new catback is held nice and tight. It's not gonna wiggle and bounce around and making vibration noises, so. Oh, did I get stickers? Sweet, I got stickers. They're going on the car. So I got the, I, got, I call them a bushing kit, but they're the exhaust hanger kit. There's four underneath the 14, and I think on the 15 and 16, there's only three, but I think you can still utilize four if they provide them for you like this. So I went ahead and paid for those, picked those up in Cobb, actually at the location in Plano. The other stuff came from Cobb and Austin. So shout out Cobb and Austin. And now we have one more piece of the puzzle. The last piece comes in this bag right here. Like I said before, it's so cool how they logo their stuff. There it is, boys. I've said it before and I gotta say it again. Thank you so much, Cobb, 
for wanting to work with myself and my buddy Todd to make this video series as best as it can be and help improve our cars along the way. So opening this up, you guys are probably familiar with what an access port is. If you're not, it's the tuner that goes onto these cars so that you can program them for all your aftermarket mods and to give it a little oomph over stock and give you a little bit better gas mileage and actually program it for what kind of fuel you're running. So I always run 93 octane, live in Texas, so we have that available. And this is gonna make the most out of my car um, by being able to turn, tune the ECU and actually make it perform a whole lot better. So I'm excited about this. Getting into the box, we open it up. It's got a card here that tells you to register your stuff and that way you can keep everything up to date. Next, you can totally tell how clean they package everything. If the catback system didn't tell you that, the access port will. So you have your little pouch that actually has the access port and then your accessories. And I haven't even opened this, so let's crack into it and see what's in here. Okay, so this, this looks like our OBD2 plug and then this goes into the back of the access port. And then this is the sticky mount for a mount that you can mount it into your car. Okay, doke, once you unzip this, you come to a quick start guide, which is gonna be very useful. If you're unfamiliar with the Cobb access port, then I'm gonna do my best to show that to you when we go to install it. But real brief, you can do so much with it. You can monitor so many different gauges and there's a shift light in there and all sorts of things just besides programming the car that you can do with the access port. So I'm super stoked about that. Let's get back into it real quick. This nice foam padding, which we'll leave that there because underneath that is the access port. In here is uh, cable, so a micro USB to USB, I think is what they call that. And that way you can get it to the computer, I believe. There is, oh cool, another faceplate, a black one, which I might be using. More stickers! They're going on the car, more stickers! <laughs> then there is the actual mount, it looks like. Yeah, so here's the mount that will actually mount to the car with that sticky adhesive one right there. And under here, drum roll please. Ta-da! This is the access port. And it is an amazing piece of machinery, computer, whatever you want to call it. This little thing right here works wonders. It is a very cool piece. It's a full like colored screen, I believe. And it's it just the way that they have this thing set up is gonna be so cool to have in the car. And I've always wanted to be able to monitor what my car has been doing because if you guys don't know, it already has some upgraded parts on it, like an upgraded intercooler intake. I put the green filter on it, and I think it's got some upgraded charge pipes on there too. So I wanna definitely be able to make sure that I'm monitoring actually how much boost I'm hitting because the gauge inside isn't super accurate. It's just kind of more of like an analog thing. This is gonna be digital and actually tell us numbers. So stoked. I don't know what else to say besides thank you, thank you, thank you, Cobb. I'm definitely looking forward to installing all these on the car. Be on the lookout for that. those videos next week. I'm definitely thinking I'm gonna be able to have those up on Monday and Thursday of next week. So they're coming at you quick. That's gonna do it for this Focus ST update, guys. I wanna thank you so much for watching. I know mine was kind of lackluster with just doing a badge removal, but I hope you're excited about all of the goodies that Cobb sent out. I think it's gonna be, it's gonna make for excellent content on an install and also for our next update, which is the last Friday of every month. I know Todd's really getting knee deep into his and we're gonna work on him. He filmed vertically this time, but we're working on getting him to film horizontally. He's, he's new to this, so uh, give him a break. Make sure you go follow him on Instagram. I'll put his name right here and also in the description so you can just click on it and go over there and hit follow. He's a great dude, building his car up for you guys. And uh, so he's excited about it. We've lit him on fire about the car world and modifying. And so now he's got the bug and he has been bit. So go give him uh, a follow and tell him thanks for making some cool content for the video series. Hey guys, if you like what you saw, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. It lets us know that we're making content you guys enjoy watching. If you've got a question or a comment on any of these parts you've seen in today's video, leave that in the comment section below. I'm also gonna leave a link in the description for each one of these parts so that you can go over to Cobb, check out and find more information about it and also purchase some from them. If you haven't already, make sure to hit subscribe. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday at 4.30 Central Standard Time. And these Focus Friday videos come out on the last Friday of every month, keeping you guys up to date to what we're doing to our Focus builds for our daily driver to make them perform top notch. I wanna thank you guys once again for watching. It's been Sean Armoustang09 and Todd, and we look forward to seeing you back here on the next video. Take it easy, boys. Mm -hmm.